and this is about number three of the deluxe professional boxing league and we are just about to witness a featherweight contest over six rounds now officials for this bout judge one richard amavi judge two clement shun and judge three nathaniel obain now introducing the boxer who is making his debut today as a professional boxer fortuna from the blue corner and tonight's foreign in white and black trunks black and red shoe and red gloves to match with the weight of 28.38 pounds from the gym boxing club here in accra presenting to you the man James Morford crossing over to the red corner and this is the boxer who is making his second appearance on the deluxe professional boxing league platform the man with a weight of 125.20 pounds the man with the official record of four fights no defeat no draw four wins and this is the boxer who is based in ghana but is a nigerian presenting to you the man yusuf adusa and the man in charge of this fight is David Mills. Hello, Adusa Adeniji, of course, a Nigerian, and uh, James Moffat. James Moffat is representing the gym. Stop me, stop. Break me. Tough encounter, and I remember Adusa Adeniji's last fight here on the same platform. And he endeared himself to the uh, fans. Let's see what he has in store for us uh, today. He's fighting against uh, James Moffat. Yes, yeah, so um, Adusa fought against uh, good old Alfred Kwe, a.k.a. Awo. Uh, winning by a KO. <laughs> Man encounter. Let's see what he has. Uh, Moffat is a, a product of the Kickboxing Federation of Ghana. He's a kickboxer who has switched to boxing. Let's see what he can offer against the talented Nigerian, Adusa Adeniji. And I love, I love his style, Adeniji. He's got long legs. He's got the longer reach. He's got the height. All to his advantage. You know, you see, Prince, when you look at this Nigerian in the name of Yusuf Adusa, as you said earlier on, longer hands, longer reach, height he has all that kind of advantage so what he does is that he waits patiently and look at the kind of tactics his opponent is bringing on board then he can switch to adapt to the kind of style that is going to be useful for him you could see that Mofa started in strong but adeniji has stick to his game plan looking at what Mofa is bringing on board then he's going to really really counter on his game plan from Mofat. So let's see how that goes. Adeniji is a really, really smart boxer. And if you're going to fight with him, then you need to be on your A game to beat him. So I was about to say that Mofat is very open for the counter right. And just before I said it, one huge counter right landed. You know, uh, Madusa fights from the south pole stance. And he fights tall. He's not the kind of tall guys who bend when fighting. He's tall. And he also fights tall, so he doesn't bend, he stands upright, and then he, he, he likes to catch his opponent with that counter hook. So when you come in and uh, you, 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 you come in lunging, he just steps back and gives you that counter right hook. Adeniji is a very, very dangerous boxer. He can bite at any given time. And clearly he's showing us exactly those uh, traits of his but of course uh, Moffat comes into this fight he's he, he's quite quick on his feet and I'm sure that his uh, kickboxing advantage would go a long way to help him uh, let's see how the dangling Adeniji rises to the occasion this is just the first round potential of an explosive fight there for all to see keeping that left hand of his uh, high and then waiting for that uh, opening there you see the jab go once again
Buffett tries to go in quick and fast, but uh, Nadiniji misses with that right hand. The hook didn't work for him. He's tried an uppercut once. That also missed Nadiniji. So Moffat's corner needs to change their tactics. Else it's not going to look good for Moffat. Looks like today is a green and white day. As uh, we featured some Nigerians on the bill already. And uh, they've all gone passed through the test with flying colors. It's now the turn of Yusuf Adeniji. Tall, lanky Yusuf Adeniji. Featherweight contest. And the professor Azuma Nelson is watching closely. I'm sure it brings some good memories to him. The good old days of how he rose to become the best at what he does. So Mufat in black. Again missing the uh, target at Deniji. Those long hands of his seem to be giving him an add-on advantage. That's a quick body swerving the hook and the second hook. That time he didn't click. You know, um, the size difference is very apparent, very obvious. And um, one thing that Adusa is doing is that he knows he has the size and reach advantage. So he's not allowing Moffat to fight on the inside. He's keeping him on the outside. And that is very, making life very, very unbearable for Moffat at this point. Moffat is in, is, is in all kinds of trouble. Every punch... And Adusa is very, very clinical. Every punch he, he throws lands. Very, very clinical. He doesn't waste a punch. He is putting on a clinic over here, Adusa. NY, Moffat clearly is in trouble. You see, Prince, I said it before they were going into the round two. I said Moffat and his corner needs to change their tactics going into the couple of rounds. Yeah. Else, Adeniji is landing the punches. Misses the big one, though, and then misses the uppercut. Things are he really now puts going Moffat difficult into the for corner, Moffat. yes. Moffat would have to clinch. He definitely is in trouble. That's a smart move from Moffat because he's really in trouble. And for Adeniji, I mean, he's not too scared coming forward. He's landing the punches all right. The head of Moffat seems to be the target. Moffat seems not to have an antidote. And I saw, I saw Moffat just before he entered. I saw him warming up in his dressing room. He came in with a large entourage, very, very confident, briskly walking into the ring. They call boxing the theater of the unknown. I'm sure in the ring, he never, never envisaged what he's going through right now. Boxing indeed is the theater of the unknown. Adeniji to be scared. And that is what the kind of fight we've seen so far for in this fight against Mofat and Adeniji. Adeniji is really confident. You can see going into the fight, he can change to southpaw and switch it to the counter punching style. And Mofat is finding it difficult to really read and adapt to the kind of styles Adeniji is switching. And it's really, really difficult in that case. If you find yourself fighting with a kind of fighter that is very smart, have the reach advantage, knows how to switch the, the, the stance, orthodox and southpaw, counter punching, going in for jab, hoops that you're not going to see, it's really, really difficult to find yourself in the ring with that kind of fighter. And that is what Moffat has seen himself now. He needs to really do something extraordinary because for me, it's been a denigy all the way. And then EG all the way. This is a featherweight contest it's scheduled for six rounds. And uh, Moffat will have to work about, uh, above himself to claw back some pride. And seated at the far end of the ring there is Charles Quarty of the Charles Quarty Boxing Gym. We've had some steady performance from his gym. No wonder they are leading the pack comfortably with uh, 42 points coming into fight 1919. But it's now Adeniji all the way. 
little bits of uh, showboating, little bits of uh, dancing there. I don't know whether it would bring back some nostalgic memories for Azuma Nelson, but I do remember that he's fought against some brilliant Nigerians. There was one in particular called Kabiru Akindele. That was the fight that obviously set the tone for bigger things to come for Azuma Nelson. And I'm not too surprised that he's watching this Nigerian closely. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that fight was at the Kanishi Sports Complex. But I remember the name very well, Kapiru Akindele. Well, there's another Nigerian who's fighting his way into the hearts of many a boxing fan here at the Bukom Boxing Arena. With his dancing, his dangling moves, his dyed haircut, oh, Adeniji clearly stands out. He's doing all that to collect all the points, you know. He's standing there. He's not just standing there idle. He's reading his opponent. His eyes kept on his opponent. He knows how to throw in the snap, snappy shot on his opponent. And his opponent don't have any answers for that. Adeniji is really, really doing so well in this round. Moffat don't know what he's doing in the round. He's not, he doesn't know what he's doing in the ring. All right, so Prince, you arise spot on over there. Azuma Nelson, the great professor, fought Kabiru Akindele on the 25th of November 1983. It actually took place in the Lagos National Stadium. That was when um, Azuma retained the Commonwealth Super Featherweight title. You're not going to get any points. That guy is so smart. That guy is so slick. That guy knows how to pick his punches. And he's not going to leave it easy. For Moffat to get into the inside game, he's always gonna stick it on the bay. Make sure he uses his jab, make sure he uses his counter punch, make sure he uses slick movement on Moffat. And Moffat is finding it difficult all night in this ring. Center referee Mills ushers us into the uh, fourth round. This bout is scheduled for six. It's a featherweight contest. Adusa Adeniji, the Nigerian, fighting out of Sea View in the uh, green and white. And of course, Moffat in the uh, black and white trunks. And Moffat is representing the gym. The gym haven't done too well uh, this season, season one of the Deluxe Professional Boxing League. They currently lie 10th, last but two positions. Seaview in the seventh position. And a lot of the Ghanaians here are falling in love with Adeniji already, and they've changed his name to Olufemi. <laughs> But I like the consistency with which uh, Adeniji is uh, fighting. Yeah, that spot on from Prince, you know, that consistency level from Adeniji have been going on from round one to this round. He's not stopping. He has not really leave his leg from the paddle. He's still going on with that kind of tempo till now. And you know, this kid is going to go far. You know, Prince, the, the style of Adeniji reminds me so much of Cuban boxer Guillermo Rigondo, who defeated our own Joseph Agbeko. Guillermo Rigondo has a very awkward style, is very, very responsible defensively. And then when uh, he, he makes you to be in a dilemma as to whether you should come in or not, when you are in that moment of indecision and he comes in with a flurry and then he befuddles you all together. That is the same style that Adeniji is adapting at this point. He is a counter puncher. He might not come to you or he might not come at you. But if you are too wary of coming at him, then he will come at you and befuddle you. So much reminds me of Guillermo Rigondo. Yeah, one of those uh, long-lasting fights you would always want to remember. Putting Agbeko under a lot of pressure in that bout. So Adeniji moving on slowly but surely, representing the Sea View gym. And again, it tells you the kind of exposure the uh, Deluxe Professional Boxing League has given, especially to the boxers from uh, the West African uh, sub-region. We've had Burkina Bay fighters uh, fighting on this bill. We've had Nigerians fighting on this bill. Uh, I think we had uh, a Beninois also fighting on the bill as well. And so it's giving them the opportunity. And look at the flexibility at which he landed the punches. Of course, the Cameroonians are also part of it. 
and uh, Mofa does well to get one in there for Adeneji. But Adeneji in total control right from round one. Honest oh. opponent. On a part of Adeniji and his corner, they've done so well, keeping him to make sure, you know, you're winning the fight, but keep on going with that tempo. Keep on going with that tempo because we know you have a lot of potential in you. And that's what we want to see because you have the likes of the Professor Azuma Nelson here. You need to show yourself approved. And that is what Adeniji is doing. So far, he has been so good for me. Another wild miss. And he's timed those uh, uppercuts and hooks quite a couple of times he's not landed to the best of uh, the effectiveness that he's looking for but he's picking up the points as he goes with the jabs dancing around the ring and he looks like he's commanding all he surveys Prince that is about three or four punches landing on the face of Mofat and Mofat don't have any answer to it Yeah, I couldn't agree with you. I mean, I've not seen the tactic that he wants to employ to outwit the smoothness of uh, Adeneji. But Adeneji seems to be in total control of uh, the bout. Um, when you are fighting with um, a boxer who has the height advantage, what you do is that you bob and weave like Joe Frazier, and then you come in with those overheads. That is what um, Mofad was uh, has been trying to do all along. But what he, he does not do is that he, he does not bob, bob and weave. He goes straight in. That opens him up for those haymakers and those uppercuts from Adeniji. He has to bob and weave. Weave going to go on the inside and then throw those overheads. He's not doing that. That is what the likes of uh, Mike Tyson and Joe Frazier mastered because they were boxers who fought at the heavyweight division and they were disadvantaged in, in, uh, in, uh, in height. Well, Mofat clearly has a lot to uh, learn. But for Adeneji, his, his uh, strategy and style seems to be working perfectly for the uh, Nigerian. He's picked up uh, some free points, as it were, from the jabs. And uh, his ring craft has also clearly manifested in his style. Tries to go into the corner there, a few of the hooks. And uh, Mofat walks out of uh, danger. And clearly, Mofat trying to play along with the hook. But Adeniji, un unperturbed at this stage, he knows that clearly. He's in contention. He's got the last three minutes of this bout coming up. We may see him opening up just as he tries to do here, connecting to the head of uh, Mofat. And there his Ghanaian fans telling him to continue with the hard work. End of round five. Seconds out. Well, I like the composure of the and Hall of Famer. The Azuma Nelson enjoying the bout. Of course, he's fought at this weight before. That's where it all began for Azuma Nelson, the featherweight. Here we go. It's the sixth and the last round. Featherweight contest between Seaview and the gym. It's Adeniji and James Moffat. Connecting to the uh, head there. Mofat had no idea that was coming. And again, he struggles to hit the target. Uh, talking about uh, Mofat, of course, that long dangling figure in front of him is not giving him the advantage. Okay, so now I can feel a few of the Nigerians in the crowd also making their voices heard. You know, battles between Ghana and Nigeria, regardless of the sport, almost always brings the best out of the two. <laughs> oh, viewers, I'm not too sure you heard that, but it was a big laugh. New name being given to Adeniji. You know, Prince, one thing Mofat is not doing right is when you want to go in with that kind of inside game, you don't go in with your face. 
you need to go in and move with your punch but time in time in out Moffat has been doing that thing countless times I don't know if it's corner I've not talked to him or prep him to I mean do the right thing when you're going in for the inside game don't go in with your face move with a punch swing and make sure you get some contact if he does that he's given the opportunity and openings for Adeni J to get him on a counter punch and that is what we've seen in a couple of rounds that is what has been going on from round one to the last round and Moffat needs to learn a lot of things in terms of boxing fundamentals if you go in for an opponent like this that has rich advantage over you you need to deploy a certain strategy that is also going to find your opponent having difficulties in the ring but so far Adeniji has been enjoying himself all night because Moffat has not really really troubled him in the ring so far well good enough for Adeniji as he walks his way into an obvious uh, win over James Moffat seconds gradually going away from uh, Moffat he tries to go into the in fighting and then he clearly in charge of this bout clearly I mean he's he's in control of the game he has dictated the tempo of the game from round one to this last round as you said earlier on control of the game he knows how to switch the tempo in favor of himself so so far Adeniji he has done so well for me in this fight Moffat tried to open up but a little bit today is the 19th week of the deluxe professional boxing league we are counting down to the final week two weeks to come for season number one we say thank you to our proud sponsors we're talking about deluxe paint paint to champion supported by renault max by tcl techno and imax electronics we say thank you very much to ghana boxing authority and imax media promotions so we are waiting for the verdicts now after the verdicts ladies and gentlemen we show invite to the ring very very important personalities who have gone through two day training course for ring officiating and so we invite them to the ring because these personalities will be presented with participatory certificates to indicate that these are guys who will go through the process, they will go through the meal. In the next few months, they will become professional ring officials in Ghana boxing. So after the verdicts, we're going to invite them to the ring and we would invite some personalities involving Zoom Zoom Azuma Nelson, the GBA president, Abraham Kote Nikwe, is the first vice Rabon Dodo, Mr. John Manfo, and then the treasurer of the GBA, Mr. Lord Akwey. They will join us to the ring, likewise, the likes of Al Hadi Fadi Fatal and Mr. Enes Ade of the IMAX Media Promotions. Yeah. Now we have the verdict. Shall we put our hands together for the two boxes? Now, Judge 1, Richard Amave scored about 60 to 54. Judge 2, Clement Ashon scored about 60 to 54. Uh, Judge 3, Nathaniel Obain scored about 60 to 54. So, by a unanimous point decision, the winner, as usual, who has fought almost about four fight, no defeat? You see, Adeniji. Now, now, Yosef, 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 congratulations. Yosef, Yosef, congratulations. Thank you so much. Now, you fought two weeks ago, you've won. Today, you've won. How do you feel being in Ghana? and trying to better your boxing prowess. How do you feel? I feel good, I feel good. And I'm really happy to win this fight today. Because, yeah, I want to be the champion, yeah. So I'm waiting, who is next? Oh, who is next? Are you happy to see Azuma Nelson here? Yeah. 
Do you, have you ever heard of the name Azuma Nelson when you were in Nigeria? No, no. You don't know Azuma Nelson? That Ghanaian boxing champion. You've never heard of him? In my way to it. No, I'm saying that don't you know a boxer called Azuma Nelson? Hello? No, you, you can't blame him. He's a very young boxer. Maybe he has never heard that name, but he's a boxer. Yosef, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate your presence here.